من التزم السلفية حصل الخير كله وحصل أجرا عظيما وفيرا كبيرا لأنه لزم هدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وصلى الله وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد الحمد لله we were, this is the first lesson of our new series of lessons covering the book of Asul Sitta Rashaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Six Foundations Six Foundational Principles and the lesson will be broken up into discussing first and foremost the introduction with the importance of this text in of itself as well as discussing each principle after that. So in the latest lesson, just to give we'll just give an bring the introduction and, and discuss some of the speech around that introduction as well as discussing each prince, each of the foundations, just so we have an understanding of each of them before we go into and go into them later on in, in other lessons in detail. And so, beginning, we we'll state that the matan of Rasul Sitta, Abdullah al-Bukhari mentions that from the Mutun, al-muhimma yanbaghi ahtimam biha. And so, Rasul Sitta, is a text from the different texts that hold importance and that it's a must and it's befitting that a person gives its due it gives it its due importance. اجتمع بها الأصول التي يكون بها الدين الصحيح and you find that this text discusses the usul, the foundations in which the deen is established. These are the foundations which aid establishing the deen. Ikhlal has the usul, ikhlal min deen and mar. وقد يكون إخلال مخرج من الملة قد يكون إخلال مخرج من الملة and so the one that has a deficiency in one of any of these usul any of these foundations one that has a deficiency in any of these foundations then no doubt there's a deficiency in the religion of the person as well. And it's possible that a person has a deficiency in these foundations to the extent that they leave the fold of Islam. Well, Imam Rosail Well, Naam Well, Hazarus bin Rosail and Tafat Bihar العالم وطالب العلم والمبتدي والمنتهي and so you find that this risala this text is from the risala from the text that everyone can benefit from whether it be the alim or the talib al or whether it be the mubtadi the one who is beginning with the talab, or the muntahi, the one that has gained a large amount of knowledge. And he's not at the beginning no more. And the asal, the word asal, so this is text, is the asul, asul, sitta. The word asal, the definition is in terms of the language, linguistically, logatan, 
is ma yubna alayhi ghayrahu. An asan is that which other than it is built upon. Well, asal also linguistically, linguistically can be referred to as ma yatafarra'a ma yatafarra'u anhu ghayr Now, asal linguistically is that which branches off from it of a further branch off from it Pristirah Pristirah so the terminology, the word asal, in terms of terminology itself, is dalil on ala shay, wa aid on a sower, a maqis alayha. And so the word asal here is dalil ala shay. It's a dalil, it's a proof, or it's an indication pointed towards something. as well as the affairs that are brought about from, from it. Now, as you go on to mention, هذه الأصول الستة مع الشدة وضوحها فيه كثير من المخالفين فالعلة لبيان هذه الأصول سبب الشدة المخالفين لها مخالفين لها وأراد الشيخ أن يبين المسائل العقدية والمسائل العملية أن سو The Sheikh intended. So, with these Asura Sitta, even though they are absolutely clear, each of these Asura are absolutely clear, even with that fact. You find that they are mukhalifin. You find that they are individuals that oppose the Tasul and many individuals. And so this was the reason and the justification. This was the reason and justification of the Sheikh offering this book because he wanted to explain and clarify these usul, these foundations due to the fact that there was a vast amount of people that opposed it. And so the Sheikh Prior to Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab wanted and intended to clarify the issues and the affairs in aqeedah as well as actions, and yani righteous actions. And so this is why you find um, the speech of the Shaykh in such a manner. And this is why he offered this, this text in of itself. And the Shaykh begins, begins the text, the Asul, Begins the text of Sula Sitta, 
حسيت من أعجب العجاب وأكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من أعجب العجاب وأكبر الآيات دال على قدرة الملك الغلاب ستة الأصول بيانها الله تعالى بيانا واضحا لأوام فوق ما ظن ظن فوق ما يظن الظانون ثم بعد هذا غلط فيها كثير من الأذكياء العالم والأقلاء بني آدم إلا أقل القليل. And so this is the introduction of the Sheikh. And in comparison to his other texts, it will be a soul. أصول الثلاثة يعني ثلاثة الأصول وقواعد الأربعة which we covered previously the introduction is quite a small introduction but no doubt it carries much benefit within it and so he begins by stating the basmala he begins by stating the basmala الشيخ بدع رحمه الله البسملة مقتدي بكتاب الله باعتداء كتاب الله وسنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم شيخ بيجان شيخ بيجان the Basmala adhering to the book of Allah adhering to the book of Allah as well as the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم so you find that with the book of Allah Allah سبحانه وتعالى began every surah with the basmala apart from surah al-tawbah Sheikh Salah Huzan, Hafidah Allah, he mentions that there's an ikhtilaf as to the reason why Surah Tawbah does not have the basmala. The ikhtilaf as to why there's no basmala in Surah Tawbah. One opinion is that Surah Tawbah is a continuation of the previous surah, yani surah al-fa'al. Surah al-Tawbah, the continuation of surah al-fa'al. And so due to that, the basmala is um, not included. And the second opinion, and this is the one that the Sheikh says, Sheikh Fawzan, Allah. He stated is the stronger of the two, is that Surah Tawbah was just revealed without the Basmala. Every other Surah was revealed with a Basmala, however, Surah Tawbah was not revealed with a Basmala. Besides Surah Tawbah, then every Surah begins with the Basmala. Likewise, with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is that He would begin when writing and addressing. He would begin with the basmala as well. And he mentions that from the strangers or strange efforts. And from the greatest of 
science that indicates the ability and the power the Malik al Ghulab, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, are these six foundations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clarified and explained with a clear, concise clarification for every general person. So in opposition to that which some people may assume. And listen to that which they assume is assume. However, you find even after this, this is a fact that we have to see six foundations that are made clear to us. Those that are intelligent and intellectual for many either fall into error with them, except for the smallest amount of the few. And so, doing this introduction here, when he mentions that it's something which is ajib, something which is strange, he mentions this because he's seeking and he considers this affair to be a great affair, a grandiose affair. And so he mentions that this affair is something which is strange. Or something which is amazing, brother. The amazement. It's one of the most amazing of the affairs that bring about our proof of the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are these six principles? Are these six foundations? And that these foundations come with al bayan wa idah, explanation and clarification. And No doubt, a person coming to understand and having a full understanding of the of the clarification which is found within it, the abd, the servant, is in need of hidayah, is in need of guidance. The abd is in need of guidance at every moment. And so due to that, you find that the servants asks for guidance in all of his prayers, all of his salawats. That Allah Ta'ala guides him to the straight path. Because no doubt, this guidance ultimately is from Allah, it's from the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guidance of two types Al Hidayat al Rushd or Hidayat al Tawfiq. Hidayat al Rushd is directing someone and indicating the khayr to, ind- to individual, directing an individual towards khayr. Whilst Hidayat al Tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's ultimately the person accepting that da'wah that, they've been, that they received. And so, whilst Allah ta'ala has made these six principles clear and manifest for each individual. It's a must that they have the hidayah 
of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in order to accept them and come to understand them. And so the abd يحتاج إلى الهداية إلى نفس الطريق ويحتاج إلى الهداية إلى الصحيح الاعتقاد ولا بد أن يهدي غيره كل ما هدى غيره هداه الله and so it mentioned that the abd the servants is in need of Hidayah. Is in need of Hidayah to be, to be guided this straight to the same path, the same Tariq. Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, the Sirat al Mustaqim. Likewise, is in need of being guided to the correct creed. As well as that, it's a must that he guides other than him. Yeah, and he gives da'wah, he calls other than him to that khayr. For every individual that he guides or he calls that khayr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide him. And so, these Asura Sitta are Al Mubin. Our means of guidance and our means of clarification. That we sent upon you dhikr. So an affair of remembrance, revealed to you as an affair of remembrance, as a means of clarification. Half it. Al-Baghawi, call Al-Baghawi. Afwan, Ibn Kathir mentions that the inzal huna is the Qur'an. The thing that's been revealed within this ayah that's been discussed is the Qur'an. Al-Baghawi, rahimahullah, he mentioned that the intent of what is intended by the word dhikr and the remembrance in this ayah is the wahi, is the revelation. And the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, left us upon a clear way. It's night, it's like it's day. And his risala, his message, was all encompassed and for everyone that was in need of it. The Messiah was comprehensive. The message was comprehensive. So each of them each of them were in need of this affair. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And then the Sheikh mentions within this introduction as well, Illa Aqalul Qali, except for the few of that few as well. And the thing that we discuss here is Lam Tukun Al Kathra Dalilun ala Haq al Mar. And so, we do not say that kathra, something which is preventable now, is a delil that someone that is individual is upon the haqq, upon the truth. Or 
وكل وصول ما is a description of someone being humbled, no doubt. Rather, what you generally find is that the small amount is the description for the people of Haq. That these individuals are killatun fil adadi wa kathratun fil haqi. That these individuals are small in number, Ahlul Haq. The individuals are small in number. However, they are plentiful in Haq. They have much truth with them. However, the actual number of them are small. And We have the hadith where the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions Bada Islam Gharib Wasayyudu Gharib Kama Bada Fatuba Ila Ghuraba Islam began as something strange and shall return as something strange So glad tidings to the strangers And this affair of Qilla this affair of being small in number is something which can be mahmooda, praiseworthy. As Allah Taala mentions, "وَقَدَّلَ أَكْثَرَ أَوَّلِينَ قَدَّلَ أَكْثَرَ أَكْثَرُ أَوَّلِينَ." That indeed, the majority of those that have come from, have come, have proceeded, have gone astray. ولكن أكثر ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون. However, the majority of mankind do not do not know. And so, you find no doubt that this is an indication. This is an indication of this affair of. there being many people that go astray and that those that are upon the haq are very few and in the statement of Rahman ibn Mahdi where he states جَلَسُوا يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةَ فَإِذَا كَثِيرُ النَّاسِ فَرَحْ فَإِذَا كَثْرَةُ النَّاسِ فَرَحْتُ وَإِذَا قَلَّ حَزِنْتُ فأسألت بشر ابن عبد الله وقال هذا مجلس سوء أنسوا الرحمن ابن عبد الله عبد الرحمن ابن مهدي رابع stated that I would sit on يوم الجمعة and if I saw that the people would become many then I'd become happy and if I saw that the people the amount of people was less then I would become saddened. So I asked Bishr Abdullah. And he stated in regards to this majlis of the many, that this gathering of the gathering of evil. And so no doubt this is a delil. That not that having a large amount, large gathering is not a proof of haq. That person is upon and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And just to conclude, we'll just quickly read through some of the, the, the six principles and what they're based upon. So the first of the six that we'll be covering, inshallah, in this, this series is the principle of ikhlas. Sincerity in the, in, the, in the ibadah, sincerity in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is the affair of ijtima fi deen or naha al tafarruq fihi. The second principle or foundation covers 
coming together, unity in a religion, and a prohibition of splitting. The third foundation is to hear, in order to have a complete unity, then you must hear and obey the one that has been given authority over you. The fourth foundation is the bayan, explanation of who are the ulama, or what is in, what is knowledge, and who are the ulama, who are the people of knowledge. And what is fiqh and who are the fuqaha. And what is fiqh and who are the fuqaha or the scholars, who are the scholars of fiqh. And who are the individuals that resemble them. Individuals that try to resemble them, but aren't really from them. The fifth is the explanation and the clarification of who are the awliya of Allah. And distinguishing them from those that try to resemble the awliya of Allah, however they are from the enemies of Allah and from the munafiqeen, the hypocrites and sinners. And the sixth and final principle, uh, foundation that we're going to go through, inshallah, is the Radda Shubha. It's the refutation of the doubts that Shaitan has placed, which causes the people to leave off following the Quran and the Sunnah and rather follow reason to follow Ara or Ahwa reason to follow opinions and desires and this is the doubt that the Quran and the Sunnah cannot be understood except by the Mujtahid the Mutlaq who is an absolute qualified jurist and then they give the description of the Mujtahid Now, this Mushtahid Mutlaq, with certain descriptions, that's possible that these descriptions possible that may not even be found completely in Abu Bakr and Umar. Rawli law anhuma. Now, if the person does not have all of these descriptions, then they should turn away from trying to understand the Quran and the Sunnah. So, these are, so then this is six found. And these are the things that we would be discussing, inshallah, over the course of these lessons. Um, from starting on from the next lesson, we'll begin with the first foundation, the foundation of ikhlas. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Jazakumna khaira wa barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu wa barakallahu nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.